Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will show you how to build an AI-based texture generator. You will use Anchor Point and Stable Diffusion, and you will be able to build a tool that you can use for your own workflow or share with your artists. Let's get started. So here I am in Anchor Point, and here I am in a texture folder where I collect all my AI-generated textures. So when I scroll down and I click on the new button here, and I can say texture from prompt, it asks me to put a prompt in it, and I will paste that. And then I click on generate image. And this will run Stable Diffusion on a cloud. So it will send a prompt to a cloud server, generate the images there, and then download the image back to my texture folder. And this takes a while, so I will pause the video here. All right, it created a new image here together with the prompt. And what we will do, we will build this tool using a few lines of Python and Anchor Point, and we will use the Replicate API. So the Replicate API simplifies the connection to cloud models for us. So with the Replicate Python API, I have access to a lot of cloud models. For example, I can generate textures, using the stable diffusion model. I could also use that for facial restoration or there are other models as well. And here's for example, the one which does the operation vice versa. So it gets an image and then creates the prompt out of it. The great thing about this, we have access to all these models using a simplified API. All right, we'll go to a new folder and then we will create a new project folder where we'll have all the script files and where we will generate the texture files as well. So I click on new, create a folder, I name this texture generation and then I do a right click and say import as project. We leave it as it is and this will create an anchor point project where I can bundle everything together. To make my life easier, I would like to enable some coding utilities. So for that, I go here under workspace settings and then under actions, I enable coding utilities. This will give us a function that will generate the base Python files for us. So the base Python files we will put in another coding folder. For that we go to settings and members, go to project actions and then the project actions folder. And this is opening up a new tab inside our project where we will place our scripts. And here I do a right click and say new action. And an action is basically like a plugin, like an integration, everything what you can do to extend the functionality of Anchor Point. Here we enter the name of our action. We name it texture from prompt and we leave everything as it is. We click on create and it created a Python file and a YAML file for us. So the Python file will hold all the code logic and the YAML file will basically describe how the action works in the anchor point environment. So if I open this in VS Code, let me bring VS Code in here and make some space. And if I open this, I can leave everything as it is. I simply want to change the registration type. Right now it's registered on file. File means that it's registered in the context menu. So if I do a right click, you see here texture from prompt on the right click of a file, which doesn't make a lot of sense in this case. What I would like to have, I would like to have it here on the new button that it shows up basically here because I would like to create a new file based on the prompt. So we simply change this from file to new file. And one thing we need according to run our Python smoothly because we need a Python module from Replicate. And this is something we need to enter in the YAML file as well. And that will save us all the Python module installation. So if you give this action to another artist, they don't need to install Python modules manually. We simply enter Python packages, double point, and then we make an indentation and we type in replicate. And now we save that. And the first thing you're gonna notice, a good thing is to click here on the breadcrumbs to refresh the page. And when you click on the new button, right now, the command is appearing here on the new button. And when you trigger this, it will execute the Python, which is basically the hello world in the anchor point language. So what we need to do is open up the Python file where we will start all our coding. So what this Python file basically does, it imports some modules, instantiates the required classes, and then it does a show success toast. And that's basically the toast we basically have here. What we want is having a dialogue where we can enter text to this. And for that, we will create a function to create a dialogue. So we create a function and we name it create dialogue. And now we need to instantiate the dialogue. Then we need to enter a title. And at the end, the dialogue needs to show up. And this function has to be triggered as well. Good, let me remove the toast here. And now if I save this and I trigger the action right now, I get a dialogue with a title but with no content in it. And let's add some content. So first we need to add label and a text input. So that's basically the label. And what we can do directly after the label, I can add a text input. And now it created an empty input. 
So I have the label and the input, and I can add something like a placeholder text, like a hint, which makes it easier to enter something later on. So let me close that. And enter a placeholder. In the next step, I need to give it a variable so I can get the value from the input field later in Python. So we name the variable prompt, and at the end we can give it a custom width, so the text field is much wider. Good. And finally, we need to add a button. And this button, of course, needs a name. Great. If I will call this right now, I get a nice wide input field with a placeholder and a button. And of course, if I click on that, nothing happens, because now we need to add a function that will be triggered on click. So this is something we do here above. We name the function click. And the function needs to get the data from the dialog. So that's why it gets a dialog argument. Now I create a variable named input and I get the data from the dialog. We use this by get value and we need to type in the variable name, which is prompt in this case. So I copy and paste that. And at the end, I would like that the dialog closes. And to see that we did everything correct, I will print the input. Good. Finally, this function has to be triggered from the button. To do this, we need to connect this function via a callback. So I do a comma, I enter callback equals click. All right, let's run this. But first of all, we need to open up the console. I can simply press Control P and this will open up the Python console here. Now if I click on new, texture from prompt, let's name this brick wall simply, you get the entered message here in the console. In the next step, we will use this message to trigger our image generation. So first of all, we need an API token and an API token is like a username and password so we can use the cloud services on Replicate. So go to the Replicate website and then you need to sign up. You need to sign up with GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub account, then go to github.com and simply create an account on this first. Then sign up with GitHub and then go to your account. And what you need is the API token. You need to, you need to copy this to clipboard. And here we will first write our function for the generation. We'll call this generate. This will need a message argument. So basically the message what we enter. And here I simply paste the token as a comment first. Then we need to import some modules. First of all, we need of course the replicate module. Then we need another module which will download everything from the cloud to our folder. And that's the module called requests. And we need the Python OS module, the basic module. So Replicate needs an environment variable set. And in that environment variable, we need to place the token. We do this via Python with OS, environ. And now you need to create square brackets. And that's important how you write it. You need to write it in capital letters with underscores, replicate API token equals, and then we remove the comment, and then we make this a string. So now we can access the model. To do that, simply log out here, and then go to featured models, and we use the Tom Moore model, which is the texture generation model. So we simply need to copy the name of the module, and then we type in model equals replicate dot model get and into the brackets we paste in the model name. Now on the next step, we need to get a URL. What the model will do, it will generate an image, it would store it on the cloud and it will give us a URL so that we can download it later. So we name this output URL and that's model dot predict. And predict needs a prompt. And the prompt is basically our message, which we get from here. And at the end, I would like to get a URL as a print statement. Now we need to call that function. And here, instead of the print, we will call that function here. Good, let's test this. All right, I made a little mistake. This needs to be called models. Let's try it again. And now you see the first problem. When I click on that, the UI starts to freeze because the UI will freeze so long until the model generation is finished. But the model generation finished and this is basically the link what we get of our image. If I simply copy this 
and I paste it to the browser, that's the image I generated right now. Of course, we want to download it first. But before that, we need to fix some other things. So the first thing is the user interface should not freeze. What Anchor Point can do, Anchor Point can run functions on a separate thread. So what we need to do instead of calling the function here, we do something like ctx dot run async and we enter the name of the function and the argument comes after that. So we remove this part. Then in the next step, I would like to have a progress indicator. Here I enter something like progress equals and then I use the anchor point module, the AP module here, the user interface, AP dot progress and here I can enter something like running stable diffusion and I would like to have it as an overlay that it starts progressing here that I don't need to do anything while it's progressing and this is another argument which is called show loading screen equals true all right let's save this and now let's take a look what happens right now so let me clear the console I enter the same prompt again and now we see that we get a progress indicator, the UI does not freeze, the application is basically processing something and now we need to wait a bit. Great, that's the image we got again. In the next step, we need to download the image to the folder. So we need to create a request. Instead of the print statement, which I'll remove right now, I will need to create a request. So I say HTTP request and this is the request module. Get, I need to enter the output URL and we enable the stream. What's important, the output URL is an array, but the request needs a string. So we will grab the first element of the array by using square brackets zero for that. Now in the next step, we need to write this to the file. Before that, we of course need a file path first. So I will enter file path and we will use anchor points context module. It will give us the file path of the current open folder here and that's called ctx path. Plus, we need to enter a slash and we enter the name of the image, which will be basically image.png. So now we write the request, the chunks which are downloaded to a file. So if the request is successful, and that's the case if the request code is 200, then we do a with open. We say wb for write binary as file, and we go for each chunk. and we will write each chunk into the file. And that should be all. So let me just go to the root folder and here under the new button, I can say texture from prompt. Let's create and then name it as brick wall and now it will generate a texture. And there it is. This is basically the texture we generated with stable diffusion. So two things we can improve on that. First of all, we can have a name that it has also a number that we can generate a set of images without renaming them. And the next thing is I would like to store the prompt somewhere here. And anchor point has the concept of attributes. So here, for example, I can add a text field which would store basically the prompt. So first of all, we will do the naming. For that, I will simply count the number of the files and add them here as a number at the bottom. So we go for count and then we use the OS module under list directories and of course we use the current folder. So that will list us all the files and folders in the directory. We don't need the list, we just need the length, so basically the number of files and folders here. So we just enter len and then we need to add this here between the name. So we do something like this, an underscore, a plus, and of course the count is an integer but we need a string here so we type in string, here we enter the count and at the end we add a PNG extension. And now, finally, I would like to have the prompt visible here as a text field. For that, I can use the attribute system in anchor point. And that's pretty easy. That's bundled in the AP sync module here. I just press APS and then set attribute text. First of all, where should I set it on which file? For that, I have the file path. What's the title of the attribute? We'll name this prompt. So that would be basically the title. If I open this up here, there will be a name called prompt and then the message which would be the message here from the top. Good, let me save this and run it again. We don't need the console anymore. And there it is. The prompt is displayed under the file name here. So that's all about it. The great thing about this is it opens up many, many possibilities. 
So we can tweak, of course, the commands. So of course we have the prompt, but we also have certain parameters like width and height, things like mask, prompt strength, and for example, the number of inference steps. So let's say if I would do something like this, and I copy this and I paste it here as an argument, I could enter any kind of number I want and the result will be always different. And you could also propagate that number to the interface, to the input dialog as well. So this is how to, you can tweak, how you can get more out of these models here. But not, not only that, you can also use any kind of models. So if you click on Explorer, you see all these kinds of models they have and all of them are used very, very similarly. So once you have written the code, you just need to adjust a few lines of Python and you have access to all these machine learning models. So that's the end of the video. I hope it was useful for you. Have fun to play around with that and thank you for watching. Bye bye.